Hi, welcome to Kick and Crochet. Today is the first glove in the Year of Gloves set. So this one uses one of my uh, favorite, less common stitches, the block stitch here. And I just, I got these two out. So when I originally did the set, I was working all of them in this beautiful hand dyed yarn from Montana Crochet and I love it, but all of them are slightly variegated. And I thought that for some of the gloves, the variegated didn't work super well because as a general rule, the simpler the pattern, the more variegated you can go and the more complicated the pattern, the more simple you want the yarn. So I decided to switch it up and redid the first like eight or nine gloves that I had already finished in a, a, in a yarn that is much more easily accessible. So this one is the variegated. I just wanted to show you so you can get an idea of what you might want to use. I actually love how this glove looks, but you can see that the block stitches don't really pop out as much as they would. Like they're super noticeable here. They were really kind of the defining feature. Whereas here, the defining feature is this beautiful yarn. So you can use a variegated, you can use a solid, whichever one you want to do. Like I said, this was a DK yarn from Montana Crochets, one of her hand dyes. Her yarn, however, is not easy to come by. She releases it and you have to snatch it up right really fast so it would be difficult for somebody to get yarn from her on a regular basis or a consistent predictable basis however this one is just a swish yarn from we crochet it's a really basic dk weight yarn uh it's 100 percent super super wash merino so it's easy to work with it's still soft it's, it comes in a lot of different colors so if you're gonna do all 12 gloves then I would recommend picking up a couple of balls of this. They they only sell them in 50 gram um, balls instead of 100 gram. So you would need to get two. If you choose a yarn that comes worked up in 100 grams, then you would only need one. I think that there is one pattern in, in the set that you would need a little more if you're doing the biggest size. But if you're doing the smaller sizes, then 100 grams should be more than enough for a pair of gloves. So I'm gonna use this, this is Swish DK Weight with Green Tea Heather. And I, for this set, decided to make all of the gloves out of the same weight and the same hook so that you can reuse yarns. You don't have as much waste if you wanted to do some color work. Some of my testers added in some color work on a couple of the simpler patterns and it looked beautiful. So you can absolutely kind of make them your own. I am doing each one in a solid color. I don't have any color work inherently built into any of these patterns because I wanted to just keep them simple. So you'll need DK weight yarn and a size G crochet hook. This one's an Odyssey hook from Furls. They no longer make these. However, any G hook will do. Alrighty. So getting started, let me pull this one off. Just wanted to show what it looks like. You can get this pattern online. The links are in the video description. And if you purchase the whole set of 12, you can get them at a discounted price. However, they won't be added to that ebook on Ravelry until that is published. So each pattern should be published on the first of the month and then it will be added to the Ravelry ebook. So if you choose to buy the whole set, just be aware that the whole set won't be there yet. You'll have to wait until each month to get the new pattern. So I'm gonna use the rest of this. When I made this glove, this is how much left over I had. Every video I'm gonna demonstrate the seven inch only because that happens to be the size glove I wear, so then you can see how it fits on me. So if you get the pattern, you can print it out. So if you are lucky enough to wear the same size as me, then you could make this just from the video without the written pattern, but I do recommend having the written pattern. It's written for sizes uh, seven inch, and this is measured around the four knuckle knuckles. So if you take um, a flexible measuring tape or you can take a piece of yarn, wrap it around the four knuckles and see where they meet up and then measure that length of yarn. That's gonna be your size. So the, the pattern is written ranging from seven inches all the way up to nine inches. And I've on the PDF made a separate page for each of the sizes so that you can print out just your size and not have to tease apart which numbers work with your size. So we'll get started here with a slip knot. And then we're gonna do foundation single crochet I do have a separate video showing this, but I will also just show you right here. And we're going to join this into a round at the end of the 30 stitches. So we're going to do 30 foundation single crochet, and you can refer to your specific size to see how many stitches you need to do. So to start, I'm just going to do a chain, then I'll insert my hook in the back bump, pull up a loop, then yarn over, 
pull through one loop, yarn over and pull through two. So now we've made an extra loop here at the base of our single crochet, and that is our foundation chain. So now we'll insert into that extra loop that we made, yarn over, pull up a loop, chain one, then yarn over and pull through both. So I'm always inserting into both loops there, and that will give it a really nice look on the bottom of the glove so that it looks like a braid or a chain. If you don't like doing foundation stitches, you can choose to do a chain and then a round of single crochet here instead. I prefer the foundation stitches because they give more stretch, and this is the base of the glove, so these ones are worked bottom up, and we want to have enough stretch so that they can fit over your hand easily enough. So I'm just going to keep going until I have done 29, and then on the last stitch I will show you how to join it when you do the last stitch. So here I've done 29 stitches, and I forgot to mention, at the very beginning you can choose whether to count that very first loop as a stitch or not. I'm choosing not to, so I'm going to ignore that space when I do my join. So I've done 29 stitches out of my 30. I have one left. So I'm going to pull this around, being sure not to twist it. And now I'm still going to insert my hook in the bottom of this stitch, just as if I was going to do a regular foundation and pull up a loop. But now instead of making my chain here, I'm going to insert my hook into the bottom of the foundation chain at the beginning. And now I'm going to yarn over and pull through that loop and the loop on my hook to join the base of the foundation. Now I'm going to finish this single crochet and now I'll join to the top of that stitch with a slip stitch just like I normally would to join around. So I joined at the bottom of this of the foundation and at the top. Alternatively you can just do the 30 stitches and join to the top with a slip, slip stitch and then use the tail to sew the very beginning of the ring together. Either way it works just fine. So now I'm going to do a chain one, turn it. The chain one does not count as a stitch. Now I'm just going to single crochet around, working one single crochet in each stitch so I should still have 30. And then I'll join to the top with a slip stitch again. These, this whole glove is going to work in joined turned rounds. I do that because it keeps the seam really straight. You're still going to be able to notice it a little bit here. This is where the seam is, but it keeps it lined up directly on top of itself. Whereas if you just do joins without turning, then you're going to have a diagonal seam and that just drives me bonkers. So I would rather have a slightly visible seam along the pinky than a diagonal seam going along. All right, the next round is the first time we're going to do the block stitches. So you can see on the glove we have two sets of block stitches and then we'll have one more at the at the finger hole. So we're going to do a chain three and turn. And a block stitch is basically just a sideways puff stitch. So what we're going to do here, now I've found out that I've turned, I'm going to yarn over and now I'm going to grab I'm going to pull up a loop around the post of my chain three. So I'm going to go around the chain three, grab my yarn, and pull up a loop. I'm going to do that three more times. So yarn over, go around, pull up a loop, yarn over, go around, pull up a loop, and then the last time. So I should have nine loops on my hook, the one I started with, and then eight more. Now you insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. So now we have ten loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through all 10 loops. That's a block stitch. They might look a little wonky. When you get them all in a row, they're going to look great. Now, insert your hook in the next stitch, pull up a loop, chain two, like that, yarn over and pull through both the loops on your hook. So now you've created this, which is the base of the next block stitch. So now we'll do it again. Block stitch, yarn over, around the post, We'll do this four times, two, three, four, then insert hook in the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all ten. 
Now we need to create the post for the next block stitch. So you can see our working yarn is way down here, right? So we don't want to do a regular double crochet. If I did a regular double crochet, it would look like this. And that looks kind of okay, but you've got this extra strand here. And that's why we do this kind of weird starting stitch. So you insert your hook in the stitch, pull up a loop, and then chain two. Yarn over and pull through both. So you're making it the same height as a double crochet, but you're doing it with a chain instead of a standard double crochet. Now we're going to do another block stitch. And we're going to do this all the way around. Each block stitch takes up two stitches, so you should end up with 15 blocks going around, or half your starting stitch count. When you join, um, you kind of have to dig in here to get the top of the previous block stitch. But however you join, as long as you end up doing the right number of single crochet in the next row, it doesn't really matter too much. So I'm going to join here, and yes, it will have this string kind of coming along the back side where I joined. There's nothing really to do about that, so we just deal with it. All right, the next round, we are just going to single crochet around. We're going to work two block, two stitches per block stitch. So you can see, uh, this is the where we just did our join, so I'm actually not going to work into that. So I'm going to work into here and there, and that's going to count as the two stitches for this block. So again, I should end up with 30 single crochets or whatever your starting stitch count was. And then I will join at the end of this once again. When you get around to the end, that last single crochet will be kind of over where this weird join is. So it's fine if it covers a little bit of stuff. And then we'll join with the slip stitch chain one and actually chain three and turn because it is time for another block stitch row. So we're just going to repeat the last two rounds. We're going to do block stitches this round and then we will do single crochets in the next round. So here I've got a chain three. Did I turn already? I did. So you can see these blocks should be stacked right on top of each other. If they're offset a little bit, again, if it doesn't bother you, then it doesn't bother me. It's not a big problem. It can be a little bit weird to see where the stitches are with the block stitches. So we're going to keep going around until we get back to the beginning. Again, there should be 15 blocks. And for each block, I'm yarning over and pulling up a loop around the post four times. Insert in the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all ten. Then insert in the next stitch, pull up a loop, chain two, pull through both. Once you've finished the second round of block stitches, you'll chain one and turn. Remember that chain one does not count as a stitch. And then we're going to again single crochet around working two single crochet in each block. After this round, we will get to start working our increases to get that lovely hand shape. Now, if you prefer a longer cuff, this glove does not have a super long cuff. If you prefer a longer cuff, you can either repeat the block stitch and single crochet rows to add more block stitch rows, or you can just repeat single crochet around until you get the desired cuff length. That's totally up to you. Just make sure that you increase the total number of rows in a multiple of two so that you end up on the correct side of the project because the back side has the joins, so there is a distinct back side or inside to this glove. 
and you want to make sure that you are in the right place when it comes to the thumb and the last row of block stitches. So for round seven, we are going to end up increasing by two stitches. So we'll do a chain one and turn. Now I'm going to do two single crochets in my first stitch. Then I will do 14 single crochets and then another increase. Remember, if you're working a different size glove, that number will be different. However, the increases on this row are just complete, directly ac across from each other, so if you don't even want to count, you don't have to. You just want to increase twice on opposite ends of the glove. So now here's my second increase, so I'm going to do two single crochet in the same stitch. And then I'll do 14 more and then join. Now for row eight, we are again going to increase twice. And they're again going to be in the same places as last time, pretty much. So at the beginning and the end. So I'm going to chain one and turn. And now I'm going to do two single crochet in my first stitch. Then I'll do 15. I'll do two single crochet in the next stitch. And then 15 more, which should bring me all the way back around to the beginning. And then I'll join to my starting stitch. So that's the end of round eight. Round nine, we're just going to single crochet around. So chain one, turn, single crochet around, and then we'll join. If you are working one of the bigger sizes, we do increase, we add the number of rows per height. So if you find that you have a wide hand that is not significantly longer, you can take out some of those repeats. Um, just make sure, again, that you take out repeats in multiples of two. So if you take out a repeat in one section, take out one more repeat in the next section where it repeats. Hopefully that makes sense, because there are places where you just repeat single crochet around a couple of rows. So you can take those out in multiples of two if you don't want to increase the length here. But moving on. For the seven inch glove, there's not a, a lot of repeats, so it would be difficult to shrink that. However, all right, row 10, we are going to increase again. We're just gonna do one increase this time. So I'll chain one and turn. Now I'm gonna single crochet 17 and then do an increase. So from here, the increases are gonna be on the thumb side because if you look at your hand, your shape, you have a little bit of increase here, but then the bulk of the increase is over here. So we increased a little bit on this side and now we're gonna do most of our increases on the thumb side. So we'll do 17, that was one. And now I'll do my increase. So I'll do two single crochet in the same stitch. And then I should have 16 more stitches. For round 11, we're just gonna single crochet around. It should be, if you're doing the seven inch glove, 35 stitches at this point. Round 12, we'll do another increase on the thumb side. So we'll start with 17 single crochets, then an increase, and then 17 more. So here are two single crochet in this next stitch. And then 17 more single crochet. The next round, we're just going to single crochet around again. So there should be 36 stitches now. Next round, we're again going to increase just on the thumb side. So chain one and turn. I'm going to do 17, then an increase, then 18. Here's my increase. And then I'll single crochet to the end of the round. Next round after this, I'm going to go ahead and do also, actually, um, after this increase row, we're going to have three rounds where we just single crochet around. So this is one place where if you wanted to reduce the height of the glove before the thumb, so here, you could reduce the number of repeats you make in this next section. So I'm going to finish this round and then I'm going to do my three rounds of single crochet around and then I'll come back and show the next step. All right, so now this is row 18, and we're gonna do another increase at the thumb side. So I'm gonna do 18 single crochet, then an increase, and then 18 more. So now my increase, 
two single crochet in this stitch and then 18 more stitches after this round I'm going to do one more row of single crochet around that I'll do off camera so I'm just going to finish this round and then do one more row of single crochet around all right actually I need to do one more round of single crochet still so after that last increase that got us up to 38 stitches now we're going to do two rounds of single crochet around okay round 21 is going to be the last increase before our thumb separation so again this is just going to be an increase on the thumb side so I'm going to chain one turn now I'll do 19 single crochets and then an increase and then 18. Now my increase, two single crochet in the next stitch. Then I'll do 18 single crochet, which gets me back to the end of the round. At the end of this round, I'm gonna do one more round of single crochet around, and then it will be time for the thumb separation, which is always exciting, because then you can really try it on and see how it's fitting. I'm going to do this last round of single crochet around off camera and then I'll come back and show you the thumb separation. All right, the thumb separate separation is next and it's actually pretty simple. So we'll chain one and turn just like normal. So you should be working on the outside of your glove the same way you did for the block stitches. If you find that you're not um, on the right side, just do one more round of single crochet around um, or take that last one out so that you are working along the right side when you do the thumb separation. So I'm going to do 15 single crochet. Well, and first you can see here the shape our glove has made. So this is the pinky side and this is the thumb side. Whether it's the right glove or the left side, left glove, you make them the same and you just put them on the other hand. So we're gonna work here and then we're gonna skip where your thumb is gonna go and keep working. So to do that, we're doing 15 single crochet so that's 15. Now I'm going to chain three. I'm going to skip nine stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now I'm going to do 15 more single crochet. Now this is a great place to try the glove on because if you need to make any modifications you don't want to have to take out the whole thing so for me it's fitting pretty well looks good i like it if you need to make the thumb hole bigger you have um, a couple of different options one you can increase a little more two you can skip more stitches so you do 14 and skip 11 and then 14 or you can increase the length of this chain in the middle which is probably the easiest way to adjust that just be aware that it will also increase your stitch count for the main body of the glove so you can even combine those you could do 14 stitches chain 4 and then 14 stitches skip like 11 so you can play with that if you find that you need the thumb to be a little bit bigger now I will say that usually it feels kind of really tight at this point, but after I work a few stitches on there, this chain doesn't feel like it digs in too much. So you can kind of play with that a little bit. But you are welcome to modify this pattern to fit in whatever way you need to. I do make the thumb hole a little bit bigger on the bigger sizes also. All right, so now that we've done the thumb, all we're gonna do is we're gonna single crochet around for five rows and then we'll do the next block stitch row so we are coming up on the end here's the plan we're gonna single crochet five rows block stitch for one row single crochet for two rows and then you're done well and almost done then we have to finish the thumb so we're getting there now when we single crochet around we are gonna do three single crochet you can either work into the loops of the chain or you can work around the chain altogether. it doesn't really matter which one you do I honestly don't even remember which one I did here looks like I worked into the loops of the chain but it's uh, totally your preference you can work around the chain or work into it 
So I'm going to go ahead and do those five rows of single crochet around off camera and then I'll come back for the block stitch and then um, the finishing the thumb. So here I'm approaching the thumb increase. So I am still going to work into these single crochets or sorry the thumb separation chain. So here this is my last single crochet before the chain so I'm still going to do a crochet there. And now I'll do three. Again you can either work into the loops of the chain or you can just do three single crochet around the chain. Either way is totally fine. It's just personal preference. And then coming back around here, this is the first stitch after the chain. So I'm going to finish this round and then I'll do four more rounds of single crochet around. Now you may have noticed, oh sorry, I had to um, start a new ball of yarn there. But you may have noticed that we have an odd number of stitches in our round here and we need an even number for the block stitches. So we are going to end up doing a block stitch decrease which I will explain when we get there. So to start, we're just gonna do our chain three, and we're gonna block stitch around that. We turned, chain three and turned, so we're on the right side, so our block stitches match the previous ones. And again, this is just like we did on the cuff. And we're going to do seven more blocks. So we have eight blocks total, and then we're going to do the block decrease. Now even with the block decrease, we are still going to have 16 blocks here instead of the 15 that we had on the cuff because we added a couple extra stitches when we did our thumb decrease or our thumb separation. So if you're like, oh no, I have 16 blocks, that is what you're supposed to have, so no worries. Alright, so that's 8 blocks. Now I'm going to do the post here, just like normal, so that we're ready for our next stitch. Now the first part of this block is just the same. We'll yarn over and pull up a loop four times. Two, three, four. Now I'm going to insert my hook in the next stitch and pull up a loop, but then I'm going to do that again with the next stitch. Now I'm going to yarn over and pull up, or sorry, pull through all the loops on my hook. So I used up one stitch more than I normally would for a box stitch. That does not want to go through easy. All right. Now I'm just going to keep going block stitch around normally for seven more blocks. So we have a total of 16 blocks in this round. So I've got my 16 block stitches and they always flare out a tiny bit. And then when you do the single crochets, they'll kind of tuck back in. So all you have left to do here for the main body of the glove is two rounds of single crochet around. Again, you could add more if you wanted the fingers to be longer. And when you work these single crochet around, remember it's two for every block stitch. So one, two, one, two. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this round and then do one more round of single crochet around. If you want to add more, that's fine. I just prefer to end on a right side round. So working around the outside and not around the inside, just because I think, think it makes it look a little bit better you are welcome to do whatever works best for you. So I'm going to finish this round, do one more, and then I will come back and show you how to add a few rounds to the thumb just for a little bit of added length. It's totally optional, but I prefer the thumb to be a little more robust. So I've reached the end of this round. I'm going to cut my yarn. And I thought I might take this opportunity to show you how I do my invisible joins when I'm done. By the way, this is one of my favorite little gadgets. It's just a little storage case for yarn needles from Burls, and I love it. Anyway, totally random, but let me get my yarn on my needle. And I usually only do this for the very last join, 
So my yarn is coming out of the top of that stitch and now I need it to wrap around this stitch. So I'm going to go in under both layers here and pull that through. And now I need it to go back down the stitch it came out of. So that creates, so it looks just like the other stitches. And then I'll just weave this end in normally, but I'll do that later since it is time for the thumb. Okay, so the thumb, uh, when you read the written directions, it sounds a little confusing sometimes. So um, you can either start with a slip knot or not. I can never quite decide what I want to do. So today I'm going to start with a slip knot. I don't know. Anyway, so you're going to join here to the thumb into the last stitch where your hand worked into this stitch and then did a chain three. So we're going to join into that same stitch. If you just, actually, I'm not going to start with a, a slip knot. If you just start on the next stitch, the first thumb stitch, you're going to end up with a bit of a hole and we don't like holes in our work. So I'm going to chain one and uh, I'm going to tighten that up a bit and then just single crochet there. You can do whatever method you want to start here, but you just want to single crochet in that first stitch. And now I'm going to single crochet around the thumb. So these nine stitches that I skipped before, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, and now I'm going to do one more stitch here into the stitch or the same one that the last hand stitch has worked into, or the first one after the chain three that the hand worked into. I'm going to go into the same one again. This is to prevent holes. Now we're going to do three single crochet across this chain. Let me get this yarn tail out of the way. Now, depending on what you did on the hand, it might modify how you do this. So when I did the hand, I worked into the chain instead of around the chain. If I had worked around the chain before, I would probably work around the chain now. But since I worked into the chain, I'm just going to work into the chain again. So I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to do three stitches across that chain three. And then I'll join to my starting stitch. So I should have a total of 14 single crochet on this thumb. The nine stitches I skipped, the three stitches on the thumb, the, the chain three, that makes 12, plus the last one of the hand and the first one after the, the thumb for the hand. So that makes 14 stitches. Now I'm going to chain one turn and single crochet around. Here you can do as many rounds as you'd like, depending on how long you want the thumb. So I'm going to finish off this round. So I'm actually going to do three more rounds still. So I'm going to join here and then I'm going to do three more rounds. You can do as many as you like to get the thumb length you prefer. But I'm adding a total of five rounds of single crochet to my thumb. So I'm going to cut this yarn. I will end up doing a magic join there, which is why I didn't join my yarn yet at the end of that round. But now you can see I've got two little gloves, two little thumbs, very puff stitchy and happy. So that's glove one. And if you made it this far, I just wanted to give you a little preview. Uh, we've got glove two. So, so I wanted to get a variety of things. Some of them are more basic than others. Some of them are a little fancier. I still need to weave the ends in on that one. They have different construction types, different techniques. 
all of them, however, use DK weight yarn and a size G crochet hook. So that is all 12, and I'm so excited about this project. Most of these, well, all of them have been written. Some of them are still in testing. I haven't filmed a video for all of them yet, but that's coming, and I can't wait to share them all with you. So pretty. Happy crocheting!